This next video is for Erin. Erin would like help uh, figuring out the right process to remove the third man, or I guess even the fourth man, from the background of this image so that it becomes less distracting. And so I am in as quickly uh, a way as possible going to show you the process that I would go through to troubleshoot how you should remove something from an image because you'll probably be doing this a lot if you end up using Photoshop for your everyday life after you finish the Art1280 class. And so I'll just go through the process that I would use to figure it out because a lot of the times you don't know which tool is going to do what you need done in the best or the most efficient way. And so I kind of have a process that I do. And so first and foremost, uh, if we look at our layers panel here, we can't edit that background layer. And so I will choose Command J because I'm on a Mac and I'll duplicate the layer. I do that all the time, even if I don't need to. I just, I, I like to have the backup of never destroying the original. And then I can start to kind of manipulate this layer if I want to. If I'm looking at this picture, I actually think it might be easiest to put the, the man and the woman on their own layer. And I'm not going to go through this process because I am going to try to make the video as quick as possible. But one thing I would recommend doing is maybe use the quick selection tool and select the, I'm going to call them, let's say, mother and father here. The mother and father. And grab both of them, make See, again, I'm not going to finish that. Make a refined selection of the two people. And then when you output it, I would output it to a new layer. And so when you do that, now we can see that they have both been moved to a new layer. You would want to do the whole thing and have a nice feathered edge and such. When you do that, then you don't have to worry about what happens to the layer beneath it because you can always have them sitting in front of anything that doesn't look so great. But, again, for time's sake, I can hear those fans coming on already. Um, what I would do is the first thing I always try to do if I need to remove something from the image is I will make a selection and I will try to use the content aware fill. And so if I grab this guy here, which I don't think it'll work because of the nature of the photograph, but the first thing I always try is I try to make a selection of what I don't want and choose edit fill. And then I can zoom in here. When you're filling, I choose Content Aware Fill. Now, if I do that and it doesn't do what I want, so it didn't do such a good job, um, I might want to say, well, it, it removed a lot of the image and I can move forward and I can start to, to use other tools, or you can hit Undo and you can go back. Um, it doesn't matter at this point which I do, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is because it did remove, I would say, about 50% of the guy. You're seeing repeating ears and faces and things like that. The next tool that I use, if I have areas I'm trying to remove that are distinctly different from the background. And so in this case, I have a beige background and a darker, more intense, saturated image I'm trying to remove. Um, I like to use the clone stamp tool. And when you're using the clone stamp tool, you're usually not really trying to make it perfect. You're just trying to make it better. And so the idea of the clone stamp tool is I want to grab something over here that is the color of the wall, and I want to copy and paste it over here. And so you need to set a target. And so if you hit the option key, you'll get a little target icon. And you can click anywhere. I could click this lady's eyeball. And then when I go to click to paste her or make a copy, I would make a copy of her eyeball. But you don't want to do that because you don't want the eyeball there, you want the beige background. And so you want to click relatively close to where you're going. So I'll option and click a target right here. And then I will just paste it over the top. Now what happens when you set a target is if I start to paint and I draw straight across, I'm not copying the target over and over again. I'm copying where the target started and whatever is to the right of it in this case because I'm dragging to the right. And eventually, you can see how I'm copying the, that little white door frame. I will start copying the things that I don't want. And so when you're using anything that you have to set a target on, you want to constantly reset that target. And so the first time I go through this with the clone stamp tool, I just kind of grab something near and make a copy. Grab something near and make a copy. And what I'm not trying to do right now is I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just trying to get rid of the really bad stuff and try to make it close to what you want. And so if I set my target here, could put a copy here, and you can go back and forth until you get all the stuff that you're trying to hide 
in place. Again, don't worry too much if it's perfect, because right now I'm just trying to copy a good area. And I've got a pretty big brush so you can see it. Um, if you get to the point where you're copying things you don't want, you can get rid of that. When I get close to this um, white banister thing, I'm going to switch to my polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to make a selection right along the edge of it so that I can't possibly edit the white banister because I don't want that part. And then now I'll just go back to my clone stamp tool and I'll finish up by making some copies on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to choose Command D to deselect, and so now I have, if I zoom out here, I have something better, right? Like, it's not as distracting. If you zoom far enough out, you can't tell too much. But if you actually look at it, it's not so great. So then what I do, if I'm trying to remove elements similar to this one, is I'll then switch to the Healing Brush tool. Not the Spot Healing Brush tool, but the Healing Brush tool. And it works similarly to the way that the clone stamp tool works in the sense I have to set a target. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste that target. But the difference is the clone stamp tool makes a copy and it goes right over the top. And the, the healing brush tool will blend the two together and kind of get rid of the funkiness. And so I'm going to make the brush bigger so that it doesn't take as long. But I'll set a target maybe up here that has a nice solid smooth area. And then click over the, the rough edges. And you will see that as I do this, I'm going to constantly, I'm hitting option and resetting the target so it's close to that. And I'm just going to click around and keep blending the two together. And in this case, there's like a shadow on the wall. So I want to make sure that when I'm on the shadow part, I'm grabbing the darker part of the wall. And when I'm on the lighter part, I set a target over here on the left hand side. And I'm just going to click through and keep blending a good spot to a bad spot. You don't have to reset the target, you could just brush across. But see how as I brushed across there, eventually I was copying the light switch. And so I kind of like just resetting the target to something close and blending it together. Again, when I get close to the wall or the little banister rail thing, I'll grab my polygonal lasso tool and remake that selection so that I couldn't possibly edit something that I don't want. And switch back to the healing brush tool and just continue. So we'll go like this and keep doing it till we get kind of a nice blend on the wall. Ooh, I'm getting some of the some of the person that I don't want, so be careful. You can also let's see you can make a smaller brush. I think my brush is just too big. And you can come through, be a little bit more careful in what we're doing. Okay, so when you are happy with the results, you can zoom out, you can deselect, and you can see. I think in our case, I think it looks okay. There's there's supposed to be a glare from the window. And I think that's fine. I would then repeat that. Let's zoom back in here. I would then repeat that for the bottom part of the wall where I don't want to see the repeating face with brown. And then the spot healing, not the spot healing brush, the clone stamp tool is what you're going to want to use to repeat the, let's grab this part. It, you're going to want to use that to repeat the banister. And so see how I'm getting a little picture icon? If I wanted to duplicate it, I would hover it over so it's the same size and click. And it will mess up the top and bottom, but you'll be able to repeat the banister and put it back where you want it to go. You want to reset your target though. So I'm not resetting, just so you can see that I could put the banister back in. But you'd want to reset it because now you don't have a nice fade from the shadow part of the rail to the ending. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope that that helps. I hope that it puts you in the right direction for troubleshooting how to remove something from the image. I would recommend always try the content aware fill first because if I wanted to, let's say, remove the vent from the picture, 
if I choose Edit Fill, Content Aware, it did a really great job in 10 seconds. And so give that 10 second a try, and if it doesn't work, then go to your other tools.